have their own government. And therefore, the reason that there are treaties between the native people and the American people is because a treaty, by the way, the word treaty means agreement between two nations. If the natives were part of the United States completely, you don't need a treaty with them. You need only a treaty with those people who are part of a separate government. And therefore, since they were already citizens of their own nation, you don't have to give them citizenship to the United States. But then we take their nation. Later on, when concepts of dual citizenship came up, like Puerto Ricans are citizens of Puerto Rico and the United States, when concepts of dual citizenship came on, then Native Americans began to be citizens of both the United States and their native tribes. But at this time, the passage of the 14th Amendment, the Native Americans didn't need American citizenship because they were already citizens of their own nations. Okay. Then we move on to the 15th Amendment. And the 15th Amendment really is an amendment about a word named suffrage. And I know that if I ask Cecilia a, what the word suffrage means, she probably would say, well, it, it has to do with suffering. So suffrage has to be something about suffering. And the answer is no. Suffrage is the right to vote. To vote. To vote. So suffrage is provided to Native Americans by the 15th Amendment. I'm sorry, not Native Americans, African Americans by the 15th Amendment. So 13th, freedom. 14th, citizenship. 15th, right to vote. It's a bundle of rights that are given to this newly free people. Here you go, you're free, you're citizen, you have the right to vote, okay? So those are considered to be the Civil War Amendments because they were passed very quickly after the Civil War was, was ended, okay, the Civil War Amendments. So it's about voting. But yet, Cecilia, unfortunately, in many states and in the federal government, women did not have the right to vote. Women, even though they're fully functional members of society, can't vote. Their property still to a certain extent. No, they're not treated like slaves in most households. But at the same time, they don't have the same full rights as men do. And they don't receive it until the 19th Amendment. 19. In the 19th Amendment, women receive the right to vote called the Suffrage Amendment. And in that amendment, in that amendment, finally women can take full role in American government. Uh, you're going to see that uh, the women's movement of that time propelled leaders, and we talked about a couple of them last year, when we were talking about the, the different houses uh, in Chicago, for example, that house people and single women, and women who were uh, searching for a place to stay. And you had leaders that came out of those movements that ultimately became the pushers of the, of the uh, right to vote. So the 19th Amendment is passed. And today, women have a full and equal right and role in voting as men do. But there was still a group of people who couldn't vote. And it was unfair that they couldn't vote. And this, as he happened in the early 70s. In the early 70s, unfortunately, we were involved in a very unpopular war. And the war was the Vietnam War. We didn't have time to cover it last year. But the Vietnam War was not very popular in the United States. As a matter of fact, today soldiers that come back are revered as heroes. And you saw the CNN video where you saw soldiers that showed up and their kids and everybody was surprised and happy and some of you said, I could cry. Now, in, 19, in the 1970s, in the 70s, when soldiers came back from Vietnam, it was completely a different atmosphere. People spit on them. They threw things on them. They yelled obscenities. They called them baby killers. Why? why? Shh. Oh, I know why. Stop, 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 st
Let me explain. Shh. That war, number one, wasn't very popular. It wasn't involved. The United States wasn't really affected. We went, and then we got involved in it, and then it just lasted and lasted and lasted. But it was the first war that something unusual happened. You see, put your hand up. In the two world wars and the conflict in Korea, there wasn't television that was embedded. If you wanted to see kind of what was happening in a very superficial way, you went to the movies and they had a newsreel, kind of what you saw in Flyboys at the beginning when, you know, a, the best friend and the girl show up at the movies and they're watching a newsreel. That, that was the news. But in the early 70s, television has progressed to a point where there's actually reporters that are right there in the middle of the action. And on a nightly basis, at around 7 o'clock, you sit down to dinner and you watch actual people getting killed on television. We're not talking about, you know, dramas. We're not talking about shows. We're talking about real war was coming to the living rooms of Americans, and they weren't liking it. And there were reports of Americans being involved in the killing of people in villages and things like that. So the news wasn't very favorable to what we were doing. But what happened? Americans that were going to the war, to the Vietnam War, many of them were as young as 18 years old. Those 18-year-old boys, because in essence, I know that you're all thinking that you're young men and men, but realistically at 18, you are to a certain extent poor. We're being, we're being drafted. In other words, it's not your choice. You're being drafted. You're being sent. But those 18-year-old boys didn't have the right to vote. So there was a movement that started that says, look, if I have the right to be killed, you're sending me to a war in another continent, and I might die? I, if, if you're sending me to possibly die, why don't I have the right to vote? And a movement started that pushed moving the voting age from 21 to 18 because that was the age that people could be drafted in. So I believe the 26th Amendment was passed to allow men and women to be able to vote at the age of 18. And you will, some of you, vote, not in this next election because it's in two years, but by the time that you're 18, you will have an opportunity to vote in a presidential election because yes. of this very unpopular war and this movement to change our constitution to allow younger people to vote. Yes. Right now, All right. All right. And we're going to cover it when we do the executive branch. Shh. Stop. Yes. Hillary Clinton. Two. Yes, Ricky. Stop, 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 stop. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen. Please listen, Ricky. Did we lose a Vietnam War? Uh, I can tell you that we didn't win it. Uh, did we lose it? Uh, I don't think that there was a loss. We lost it and we said we surrender, but we in essence decided that we didn't want to fight it anymore. Very similar to what's happening in Afghanistan and Iraq, where we fought, 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 stayed there, and then we left. Well, and what right. happened, what happens when we leave, when we leave is that if the people with the power leave, the people that the people with the power protected are no longer protected. So there's a vacuum of power and then the Viet Cong really took over and and in essence Vietnam became a communist nation. Okay? So last question before we start the against who? Okay, in Afghanistan the war started because of 9-11. Okay? In Afghanistan, the Taliban, who was in charge of Afghanistan at the time, were protecting Osama bin Laden. And the United States said to them, turn him, turn him, and he had claimed 
for his group of people the responsibility for 9-11. So the United States said, turn them over. And they said, no. The United States said, turn them over and gave them a deadline. And when they didn't, then the United States went in there for the purpose of taking them out of power because they were protecting terrorists and finding bin Laden. And obviously he got out of a Afghanistan, and later we found him someplace else, and he was killed. And Wait, where was he? At the bottom of all. Well, because, because the problem that you have is when you leave, when you when you've created a mess, and you leave, then everything falls apart. So if the United States leaves too quickly, the people that we fought to take out come back. And, you know, things like ISIS take place. But in any event, hey, that's neither here nor there. Okay, we have a quick question. Okay, quick question, and that's it. Where was Osama? Osama. No. Uh, he was, I believe that he was in, he in Turkey. Have you seen him with your country? Nope. Okay, I believe that he was in Turkey. No, not in Turkey. No, not in no, Afghanistan was not nuclear power. Germany and then I saw I thought he said Germany. I thought he said Germany. What? They said it's not Hey, I'll make you a good Hey, ladies and gentlemen, stop. Put, put, your, put your hands down. All right, hey, Alexander, Alexander, stop. Wait, it's on. What?